Hi everyone, I am Diana DeRosa, co-organizer of the Echo Film Festival, and we are at the Camden Tour Stop right now, and I'm with Daphna Yakin, and you are all about the great football, so tell our viewers about that. Thank you. Yes, we are very excited because we're traveling with you guys at the Equus Film Festival this year, and we just released the film, and it won the Best Documentary in Brooklyn, so we're very happy to be with you. And The Great Flip-Off is about the last of the great bareback riders. We started the film in 2006, and we just invited a couple bareback riders. It was going to be a TV pilot that we were looking into, and just as we were about to film, um, Ringling announced the end of the Three Ring Circus, and every family that still was riding at different circuses decided to protest and come to our, where we were filming. So bareback riders do these incredible feats and aerial, um, just beautiful dance on top of horses, and bareback. And that's really what started the circus. And this modern day circus started 250 years ago in Europe. And this year was the 225th anniversary of circus in America. So it was interesting to see and follow these guys for over 10 years and these families from France, from Italy, from um, uh, Hungary, from Mexico, and others that came from the United States that ran away to the circus. So we have lovely families that we really have come, to, have come together and have opened their doors and their hearts about this beautiful art and how it started and how their families are seventh generation. And you know, some of them are just having babies now and trying to figure out you know, what's their, they're still trying. And, you know, the circus just closed last year. So this film was so serendipitous that we happened to be following the first circus act for over 10 years. You know, Daphna, it's been a long, you know, with you going, following for so many years. The whole concept inspired you, but what made you stick to it for all those years? What was it about this message that you were really supporting? You know, I do, I, I kind of concentrate my filmmaking on cultural preservation and justice and women's rights. And I have to say, one of the people that really helped me through this was Karen Turvey, who's one of the few women in the film, and was known as Zena in Cirque du Soleil. And when I met Karen, Tom's sister, she really helped me bring all these families together. She had been working since she was, I think, 16 in the circus. She and her brother had kind of run away together and learned bareback riding. They were expert riders. Tommy now has been the trainer on The Walking Dead for nine years and doing all the stunts and the training of the horses for them. And Karen uh, has always sort of been behind the scenes helping everyone. And she's an amazing woman, an amazing rider and trainer herself. So I think she kind of spearheaded this with me. And then we got to meeting the families. I mean, knowing Enrique Suarez, who's one of the oldest riders, and Timmy Loyal, who's still riding at 60 years old. They're just incredible artists. And you know, I grew up with the circus and going with my parents. And um, the idea of this lost art that seemed like a mainstay for, it's the first fringe arts in America. It's one of the first arts that we have in our country. And for people to just kind of discard it, I understand the animal rights issues, but it's still something that needs to be preserved. You know, what I think is fascinating is that we think of the fact that the circus, Barnum and Bailey, the circus ended, but it's really still here in a different form. And people should understand that there's more circus out there, not necessarily the animals, but the horses and the bareback riders and those. So talk a little yes. bit about that. Yes, it, it, it's really interesting because um, even though it's the ringling that closed, you'll see in this film along with the, the, the wonderful family, the Zopes, who are out of this world, these three brothers. So they just carry the film <laughs> and incredible riders. And two of them have just had children. But the idea that, um, they now have, uh, Elisa Zobe has been really trying to continue this art. Um, and you also see Circus Sarasota and the kids from Circus Sarasota and how uh, the leaders of Sailor, Sailor Circus are still trying to make sure they always have a horse in their ring. Um, and then, you know, even though bareback riding doesn't necessarily, isn't in the circus, you'll have other um, types of shows that will include bareback riding now, so that's really interesting. And circus itself is having a whole resurgence, and that's what we find in this film, that it might be the animals are disappearing, but then you see there's over 300 schools that have popped up in the United States to honor circus arts. And Sailor Circus especially was in this film as well, and who helped us do the research, and Dominic Jean Doe. Um, there's so many people out there really trying to preserve circus. The Smithsonian just had their 50th anniversary and celebrated circus. 
You know, one of the things that I found fascinating by the film, uh, you know, about it was just watching them, watching them as they train, watching them as sometimes even made mistakes, but watching what they do on these horsebacks and their timing and everything, it, it, it makes me think about vaulting. Yes. I mean, it's just, well, that's, it, right. yeah. Th yeah. That's, that's the connection, right? Yeah. So talk a little bit about that part of the film. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I am totally a filmmaker, I'm a fly on the wall person. I, I ride horses and I'm horrible at it, but I, uh, <laughs> the idea of being with these people that have such a skill and to watch them, and watch their timing, and watch them practice over and over and over and over again. They do not stop, and the way they treat their horses. Um, and yes, you know, you see vaulting, and it's incredible, a great art, but think of bareback riding as doing that 10 times harder, and having no bar, and doing everything without. It's just doing everything without a net. I mean, amazing to see, you know, that uh, these people can do uh, uh, somersaults from horse to horse, uh, being on shoulders of four people. We have, there's a particular, you'll see in a Millie movie, where they have the largest um, on shoulder, and I can't remember the name of the actual stunt, but they have like eight horses side by side and 20 riders on each other's shoulders um, going around Roman riding. So when you see these kind of things like Roman riding where you're riding a horse, stand, two horses standing or more than that, um, the skill set of these people are just, there's, there's no such thing. I mean, it's, it's two minds working as one, the horse and the rider. And that's something Kara Turbiot also always explained to me, and the idea that how can you get that horse, you, know, you have to trust that horse, and that horse has to trust you, because you can die. I mean, that's, that's what's yeah. bottom line, is bareback riding can kill you. And the idea that you have to have perfect timing to live, and that they do this every day, that's, it, it's just, I'm always amazed by it. I can watch it over and over again. You know, you said something that is actually near and dear to me, and that was the way they treat their horses. You know, so many times, I don't think that people get it. You know, if you don't treat the horse right, if you don't make sure it's healthy, it's you're not going to be able to get the job done. These people, and so many horse people, really care and take an incredible care of their horses. The best story that, um, actually Mark Caroli, who's a very famous rider and rode with Hannaford Circus, and Mark Caroli was uh, an excellent bareback rider who then became, and it's different, there's a, what they call the, the comedy or the clown riders, which you actually have to have even more skill because you have to, don't have a fall, plus do all the bareback riding. But he talks about after an aerialist is done or a clown in the circus, they can go out, they go party with each other, they go hang out with each other. But if you are a bareback rider, you you stay with your horses. So while everybody goes out, you then care for your horse and you sleep with your horse. He said he, night after night he slept in the stables. They all sleep with their horses. They hang out with them if they're on the road. The care that's taken is, is just you know un, unmatched. Um, nobody takes care of their horses like a circus person, or like a bareback rider. So how beautiful is that? So if people want to know more about this film, tell them some details. Tell them how they can get a DVD. Let them know how they can be also have the privilege of watching this film. Um, so we are traveling with Equus Film Festival, so please come out and find out whatever city they're traveling to, because it's really wonderful to see it on the big screen to watch those horses. But we're very lucky. We're going to be released by Gravitas Distribution, so which means that you'll be able to get the film. It goes into pre-release on iTunes at the end of March, so you can order your copy there for streaming and then um, if we get 400 people to buy it on iTunes in the end of April it gets released and then hopefully it goes from there from Amazon, iTunes to Amazon and then uh, I think about three months later it will then be in, um, probably on Netflix or Hulu. So please watch for it and you can find out, we'll be keeping you up to date on where it is on um, thegreatflipoff.org or The Great Flip Off on Facebook which is where we tend to post more. So please follow us and you'll be able to see the film and we'll be posting a lot of behind the scenes over the next 60 days. So we hope to. So Daphne Yakin, thank you very much. The Great Flip Off, remember the name of that film because it's just a wonderful, wonderful film. Thanks for having us and thanks for showing us.